Hello, welcome back to Kaluna Vineyards. I mentioned how we ripped out a couple of our vineyard blocks and that's left us with some huge piles here of the dead vines and all the metal from the trellis system. And the industry standard way of handling this is to burn the pile. The purpose of this is to burn the wood up so you're just left with the metal, then you can take the metal to the dump. So we're about to start that operation Last thing I want to do is start a fire at Kaluna Vineyards, but this is how we're going to handle this situation. We've got our permit. Our fire inspector has been up here and Jose is now going to light the pile. So we've lit the fire here. We've got our hose ready in case we run into any problems and Jose will use the the backhoe here to feed the fire with these additional piles as we get going. After the ripped out vines burn, we will clean up the burn site, making sure that the fire is completely out, and then take the metal down for recycling. With our old vines now disposed of, we look forward to planting our new vines this spring, and we'll make sure to share our progress on planting with you. All right, well, we had a couple of questions come in this week, and uh, let me answer two of them that are quite related here. Um, one asks about screw caps and whether they make a good uh, finishing for a wine bottle, and the other is about cork wine. So since these are related, I thought I would try to answer them together. Now, screw caps are really probably the most reliable closure for wines and that they're efficient, very long-term. Um, and so in the end, they may win out. But one of the problems of screw caps is the fact that they are so reliable at keeping oxygen out of the bottle that um, wines that are under screw cap often have a little what's called reduction. It's sort of that lack of that little bit of oxygen that's imparted by corks. You know, when you put a cork in a bottle, there's a little bit of oxygen in the lenticels or holes of the cork. And that little bit can really help the wine develop in a way that historically has, has been appropriate for wine development. And if you don't have that with screw caps, it could be a negative. Um, on the other hand, you can manage that at the bottling line and introduce a little bit of oxygen. So who knows exactly how that will turn out. The one thing I would say though, when people ask me, is Kaluna going to use screw caps? I would say, maybe someday, but please don't make me be first to do it. When Chateau Margaux and other marquee wines, you know, use screw caps, then I could see maybe converting to that. Um, uh, but I don't want to be a leader in that portion of the market because I just don't think it will do well for us. And frankly, I don't necessarily expect Chateau Margaux to be using screw caps because the cork industry really is starting to clean itself up. And just to go to the second part of the question, um, what about corked wines? There are wines that are spoiled by their own packaging, which is to say corks as a natural product sometimes come with a mold on them that includes the compound trichloroanisole or TCA. And that smells like sweat socks basically. And uh, it really uh, ruins the wine. And it comes at all kinds of levels. So you can have a corked wine that's clearly corked and ruined. And then you have some that even wine professionals will say, eh, that might be corked, I'm not even sure. And people have a different thresholds on it too. So you get people with different views. In any event, it's a very annoying problem. However, in recent years, the cork industry has found ways of screening corks. 
So right now, all my quarks are guaranteed to be TCA free. Now that doesn't mean they actually are TCA free because every once in a while we get a quark bottle wine, but it's very rare now. But there's an even uh, next level of technology that's coming along actually with this year's quarks that I'm getting that's supposedly even better than that. So I think if the quark industry can clean itself up in that way, I do expect quarks to be around for a long time. Okay, well, let's go try some wine. Okay. All right, well, here we are in the wine cellar, and what a mess it is. Oh, and who put these chocolates here? Those aren't supposed to be here. I've got to talk to Marla about that. But anyway, let me grab a couple wines that I wanted to talk to you about tonight. And we will go into the kitchen. Okay, today I wanted to tell you about our Kaluna Vineyards Cuvée, the CVC, the current vintage and next year's vintage. We have a little bit of a surprise for next year that I want to tell you about. But first of all, the current vintage is the 2017. We released it just a couple months ago. And gee, I'm really happy about this wine because I was somewhat worried about it when, uh, when, during that growing season and when we made the wine. You know, 2017 was a bit of a tough year. Uh, there were a lot of fires at the end of the season, and uh, that wasn't a problem because all the fruit for this was picked uh, well before those fires. So there's not an issue with that. But the other big issue in 2017 was we had some really bad heat spikes over Labor Day. We had about three days where the temperature got to about 112 degrees, and we lost quite a bit of fruit, maybe 20% of our harvest that year. But, you know, once we culled out the, the, the bad fruit in the vineyard and on the sorting table too, um, our vintage was smart, but it's still very good. You know, to me, it was a little bit riper than my usual style initially, but it's really come around in a nice way. Um, and we just got last week a really nice review from John Gilman, a view from the cellar, who writes, the wine offers up Beautiful purity on the nose, wafting from the glass in a mix of dark berries, black plums, tobacco leaf, and a lovely foundation of soil with a discreet framing of new oak. So I love his descriptions, and I think that's, um, you know, fairly accurate, including his last line is, this is a touch riper in style than is customary with David's wines due to the fin de saison in 2017. He's referring to the heat at the end of the year. But the wine is every bit as elegant as one has come to expect from Kaluna Vineyards. So um, I'm, again, very happy with the way this wine turns out. Enjoy it as a $33 bottle of wine. I think it's tough to beat. So again, this is our bottle, our Bordeaux blend leading with Merlot. Most of you know that, but I should say it. Um, so next year, I say we have a little bit of a surprise, and that is that we've changed the label a bit. And uh, hopefully you can see it here and we'll put a picture up too. Um, but we um, have gone away from the grayscale label, which I've always loved, it feels very elegant, but it is true that it's kind of dark on a shelf and doesn't stick out at all. Uh, we adapted this label from another label we did um, on our Block One Cabernet uh, last year, or the in, 2017 and decided we would use it for the CVC. So it's a little lighter in color with a nice purple shaded heather plant. And we're really enthusiastic about the label as well as the wine that's in there. 2018 was really a great year for us. So that's going to be a good wine, but we're going to wait another, you know, 10 months or so before we try that one. 